Okay, this is Jayhawk Scott, and uh, first thing you're probably asking is, what in the hell am I looking at here? Okay, what you've got here is, this is one of my overflow boxes on my display tank. And this right here is my return line, comes up, that's a 90 elbow, and goes into the tank. That is, down here, is my return. Um, and these are a couple float switches. These are not float switches for my auto top off. They are float switches to prevent my tank from overflowing. My original plan was to take and run a pair of Durso overflows, but I made a mistake when I I plumbed uh, put my ran my plumbing to my garage and I made the return line uh, and the overflow line uh, both lines from the, the garage are one inch I would highly recommend anybody wanting to do any kind of a remote sump that if you're gonna want to run one return line make it bigger uh, and probably almost even double the size at least one and a half times the size I wish I had at least a one and a half inch line if I had that I wouldn't have the concerns and the problems that I've got but um, through some creative use of my uh, Apex controller, I think I've been able to get around my problem here. So what I am doing is I am running um, not a Durso overflow, but a Herbie overflow. And I am running a 100% siphon. And I'm doing the same thing on both. I've got two overflows and I'm, I'm doing the same thing on both sides. Now, the one thing that, that I would recommend to anybody that is going, running a, a, a Herbie overflow, even a, even a Durso overflow, is get yourself some quality gate valves that you can use uh, to really tune the amount of water that's, that's going through the overflow because if you can't make minute little adjustments and I mean super minute you'll never really get it balanced out so and just a regular check valve um, it, it, it just you can't make that small of adjustments to to get where you need so so anyways what I'm doing here is you don't see people doing I've got I don't have an emergency overflow for my Herbie if the water level something were to get clogged in my Herbie, uh, something, whatever, for whatever reason, I don't have it set right, um, this tank could, could easily overflow. But that's where these float switches come in. The first float switch, which it's hard to see from this angle, this float switch uh, is lower than this one. This first float switch, and again, this is all connected to my Apex, through a breakout box. Um, that float switch is connected and controls what I call my pressure release valve. And what it is, is it's a heavy duty gate valve that sits down in my garage and it looks like this. This is a one that I'm going to use for my um, <coughs> quarantine tank, but it looks just like this. It's a 3 8 inch um, gate valve, or not gate valve, um, uh, solenoid valve and what happens is if the water level in my overflow here rises to a point where it flips this first um, float valve that uh, solenoid down in my garage turns on and the, that what it is it's connected to the main return line for my pump to my display tank and so it bleeds off some pressure so in essence what it does is it reduces the amount of water that I've got flowing into my display tank. And that should handle, I would guess, 90, 99% probably of the issues that I would have if the water level keeps coming up. And I can obviously see that and, and know that, that the water level, that I need to probably make some adjustments on my gate valves. Um, to, to, to account for that 
water level coming up. The second one is the is really the the oh shit um, um, float switch. If the water level ever gets up to this point, what it will do is it will shut off my return pump and sound an alarm and send me a text message. So um, this is the one you never want to have it trigger, but it's the one you really gotta have to make sure that you don't overflow. The first one, if it comes on and off periodically, that's not that big of an issue, but I, I really don't want it coming on and off. I want it to be the first line in, in the defense. So how does this work? So let's go ahead and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover up the overflow in the other box and it takes a little while for the water to come up and you know start hearing the tank make noises and gurgle and slurp and and um, but one of the reasons I went to the Herbie over um, the Durso is I just the Durso I just could get it get it quiet and um, because it's all gravity fed and I've got a long run to my sump down in my garage and I've got a lot of 90 degree elbows to get there that it, it just didn't didn't flow that well so anyways you can see the best way to see that the water level is coming up is you can see it kind of on um, <clears throat> on the, the, the 90 elbow there I mean here I'll turn on maybe that makes it easier to see um, so the water level has come up and you can see it's almost on the top of, of this pressure release valve now I'm essentially running right now with just one overflow and not two and it's it's almost on the top of that float switch but my pressure release valve downstairs has kicked on and as you can see the water level really has stopped rising it's it's not any higher than it was it's um, it's it hasn't moved the top float switch but that pressure release valve is bleeding off uh, return water so um, it's just sitting there uh, it, it ultimately long term the pressure release valve can't keep up with the water that's returning and it will flip that that top switch but if I go ahead and just turn off that pressure valve and um, let the system fail you'll see I just turned it off and the water level will start rising a little quicker here and, and as soon as it does, what will happen is it will, it will flip that, uh, that float switch here. And the water's slowly coming up. Uh, let me see if I can bend this. There you go. Maybe you can see a little better now. Um, it's, it's over the top of that bottom float switch, and it's coming up on that 90-degree elbow. Uh, one of the things about the Herbies is as the water level gets higher and higher it does seem to increase the siphon I, I, so that's a good thing um, but again I, I think anybody that's had an overflow uh, and anybody that's had a fish takes probably had an overflow knows that the, the wife's not real happy when when the water overflows in the all over the living room or wherever the tanks at so if you want to keep your marriage together make sure you've got some kind of a backup to make sure it doesn't overflow all right well that float switch is coming up it's it's almost to the top now and very soon um, that that float switch will trigger i hope <laughs> uh, the shut off of my return pump and when that happens you'll see the water level drop pretty rapidly in in the overflow box so it's almost to the top and any second now it should kick off we're hoping um, but I, if you don't have anything to prevent uh, an overflow um, and you're running a Herbie if you don't have most people that run Herbies have a secondary overflow box and uh, um, the emergency overflow uh, oh I now I understand why this thing's not shutting off as I had my return pump on my apex set to on not to auto I flip it to auto and it's going to shut off
there it goes and you can see it right now the water level is starting to drop really quickly um, that's one thing that you need to make sure that when you're running an apex or any kind of a controller setup that when you make sure you got everything set to auto there's an awful gurgling sound but make sure you've got everything set to auto because if you have it set to just on um, it, see here I would have I would have had a real problem I wouldn't have been here sitting here watching this if, if something bad would have happened it would have just kept pumping but in my program what will happen now is the return pump stay off for two minutes and after two minutes it will come back on and uh, it will keep doing that I don't one of the things I don't want my return pump to be coming on and off and on and off and on and off with this top float switch because if you had something going on that was wrong you, you it, that scenario could take place so it shuts off waits two minutes and then it kicks back on and, and then resets the system so but that is how I'm getting by with a, a Herbie overflow in a situation where I do not have the second emergency overflow. Most everybody you'll see out there, if they're smart, has a, a Herbie overflow with a second emergency overflow that if the water level gets so high in their overflow box that it goes over that. But like I said, uh, I originally tried to plumb this thing to do that um, but I just don't I just didn't have enough capacity in that one inch line to to do it so I had to get creative on on how I went went ahead and uh, allowed myself to feel comfortable running a Herbie but these float switches are um, are a key part now though the water level is coming back on the return pump kicked on um, takes a little while for the uh, for the overflows to silence themselves, but but uh, after about a couple, two or three minutes, everything's really very quiet, uh, and and I'm really pretty happy with it. So, but I'm able to uh, check the float switches. I got to make sure those float switches stay clean because they are they are critical. So, anyways, if you've got any questions on on what I did here, what I used here, my Apex code. I'm happy to share any of that, so uh, just shoot me a comment or send me a private message, whatever you want to do. Uh, be sure to um, subscribe to my channel if you like my videos. I uh, hopefully have some more coming out here pretty soon. And uh, uh, I'm always interested to hear what people have to say. If you've got any questions or comments, uh, just put them in the comment line or, like I said, send me a personal message and I will be sure to get back to you. So this is uh, Jay Hawkscott signing out.